Hey everyone, Dusty from NVIDIA here. In this video from the Jetson AI Fundamentals, we're going to be covering image classification on Jetson Nano using deep neural networks and then writing our own Python script that does recognition. Then we'll show real-time classification on a live video stream from a camera and play around with objects that you might have around your house or your desk. So with that, let's get started a while. So navigate your browser to the Jetson Inference GitHub repository. The URL is shown below and in the description. And what we're going to start with first is the classifying images with ImageNet section from the Hello AI World tutorial. What image classification does is it returns to you the object class that best represents the entire image, as opposed to object detection or segmentation, which can provide multiple objects per image. Detection, for example, can give you bounding boxes of multiple independent objects per image. But the basic building block of that is classification, and then those networks serve as the backbone into the more complicated architectures like uh, for object detection and segmentation. So the models that we'll be using in this example are GoogleNet, ResNet, and a bunch of other pre-trained models that come with the repo here. The ones that are automatically downloaded by default are GoogleNet and ResNet 18, but if you like these other models, you can download those as well. And all of these pre-trained models are trained on the 1000 class ImageNet dataset, uh, the ILS VRC benchmark, and you can see all of the objects that these models were trained to detect here. Uh, there's lots of different animals, different animal species, different types of food, household objects, different types of vehicles. There's really a lot in here, almost too much. That's why in a later video, we're actually going to be retraining our own classification model on a subset of this data or on data that you collect yourself for custom objects that you might want to detect. But uh, when in doubt, when we're running the demos here, uh, consult this list to see if what you're trying to recognize is actually in the list of objects that the network was trained on. Okay, so what we're going to do first is essentially run the image classification network on a bunch of different test images just to familiarize ourselves with uh, what it's like, what it does, how it works. And to do that, we're going to be using this ImageNet program. It's a sample that the repo comes with. Later, we'll make our own sample that's boiled down and go through the code line by line. But uh, the one that comes out of the box with the repo is shown here. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see the code more easily. Essentially, it just loads the network from disk by default. This will be GoogleNet, but you can pass in ResNet or any of those other ones from the pre-trained list or even your own custom model. Uh, so after the network is loaded, it creates video input and output streams. And then in a while loop, it essentially processes each of those frames, classifies it, gets the textual description of the class. And in this example, it overlays that text on top of the image and then saves the image back out or renders it to the screen. So if you haven't already, let me uh, get this back here to the normal zoom. Okay, so if you haven't already, fire up a terminal window and navigate to your Jetson inference directory. And then we're gonna start a Docker container if you aren't already running one. So run the docker slash run script. Then what's that, once that's started, CD into build slash ARC64 bin. This isn't strictly necessary because you can run these programs from wherever inside the container, but it does help in order to, to use autocomplete to find the, the test image files that we're gonna be using. And you can find those in your file browser here, Jetson inference data images directory. So here's all a bunch of example images that the repo comes with and you can download your own images, uh, you know, capture them from camera, find them online, things like that for, for testing. Uh, so there's a bunch of examples that are already shown in the repo, but let's do some different ones that aren't already covered. Um, these object ones look interesting and we're actually able to process them all at the same time without having to 
run the program multiple times. So in order to do that, we will just run the ImageNet program and then pass in this path images object. We'll use a wildcard here so it actually processes out all of those. And then we're going to save it to images slash test directory. I'll explain why we use that specific directory here in a moment. So what it's going to do now is it's going to load the network, which is um, optimized with TensorRT. The very first time you start up a particular model, it's going to take a couple minutes to run optimizations on the model. But uh, then after that, you know, it saves that to disk and loads nearly instantly. So after it does the optimizations and loads, then it's going to process all those images that we passed in. And even though this is running in the Docker container, we can go to the test directory we saved those to from your host and actually view them because this particular directory is mounted into the Docker container. So meaning any changes here are reflected inside the container and vice versa. So that makes it easy to browse these with your file browser as opposed to trying to do that from inside the container. We have a bunch of different objects that it's classified. Thinks these are mopeds, but pretty close. Trains, things like that. Uh, let's see what else we can play around with here. Uh, here's a bunch of different cats that the repo comes with. So let's try that. Images slash cat. Use the wildcard again. I will mention when you're doing the wildcard, it's important to enclose that inside of quotes because otherwise the, re the terminal will automatically auto expand those. And so save it back out. Cat underscore i. The i just means that's the index of the image that gets processed. So it'll that'll be expanded to be zero, one, two, three. You can insert whatever pattern there that, that you want to use. Okay, let's check how these came out. So it says it's a tiger cat. I think that's a small cat breed that looks like a tiger. You can kind of see why it's got like orange and black stripes on it. Tabby cat, Persian cat, and lynx. So interesting thing about the ImageNet data set is lots of different species and breeds of cats and dogs and bears and all types of different animals. So it can actually be able to tell these different species or breeds of cats apart from each other, which is uh, quite interesting. Okay, so now that we've played around with the sample a bit, processed a bunch of test images, we can actually see how to run this on a uh, real-time video. Um, the only difference how we'll run it is instead of passing in the file name of an image, we'll pass in the file name of a video to run instead. And the type of videos it supports loading are here on the camera streaming and multimedia page. It supports MP4, MKV, AVI, FLV in these codecs here like H.264, H.265, and, and MPEG. And these samples can actually do a wide variety of multimedia streaming like from video files on disks or sequence of images that we just did or USB cameras, MIPI CSI cameras, or even network video streams. And those are all documented here, how you run with those, how you use them. And if you're using a compressed format like this video we're going to load, that actually uses the Jetson's hardware video codec to do that decompression in hardware. And likewise, you can save out a video that gets compressed uh, using the Jetson hardware. So it's not using the, the CPU for that. Okay, so there's a test video that's linked to here on the GitHub page. Let's download that quickly here. And then we can run it with the ImageNet program like we did before. So same kind of thing, but this time we're just going to pass in the file name of this video file instead of the image. After it loads, it starts loading the video here. We'll see the screen pop up. And in this case, it's running at 80 frames per second and processing all of these frames independently. 
this is just a real simple video of a bunch of jellyfish floating around. Um, but you can supply your own videos, record videos, and then show them. Later we'll show how to run it on a live camera stream that is fun to play around with. Uh, but next, what we're going to actually do is code our own recognition program in Python. So go to the next step in the GitHub tutorial here. And this is what it's going to look like. It's very simple, pretty similar to the previous example that we just ran, except this one, we're going to go through each line of code and it's going to load an image from disk and then print out the classification result from that. Um, so in order to set this project up, what we're actually going to do is exit the Docker container here. So you can do that by pressing Control D or typing exit. And the reason we're going to quit the Docker container and then later restart it is because we actually want to store this program on the host here um, so and mount that into the Docker container so that uh, we don't lose our program after we edit it and shut down the container. Because any files that you save inside the container are going to be lost when you shut that down unless you make a checkpoint or something like that. But oftentimes it's just simpler to mount a directory from your host device on the Jetson itself into the, the container um, environment. So let's make a directory in our user's home and I'm just going to call mine my recognition uh, cd into that and just create a blank file with the touch command my recognition.py and then there are some example images here that you can download right from the repo or you can supply your own test images if you want. I think these are different bears, different kinds of bears here. Okay, so download those. Let's check that these are good to go. Okay, so now we're going to go back and fire up the container again, this time mounting in uh, our My Recognition uh, directory into the container. So in order to do that, when we run the Docker run script this time, we're going to use the dash dash volume command. Uh, the dash dash volume argument and what you do first is pass in the directory on the host that you want to mount and then separate it with a colon and then it's the directory inside the container that you want it mounted to. So you'll see here when it starts this time the user volume flag is shown up and for sanity purposes let's make sure we can navigate to this directory and there's all the files but this time it's being run from inside the container. Okay so now we're going to actually start editing the code and we'll go through this line by line. You could edit this from within the container itself. Oftentimes it's just easier to open it in your text editor of choice from the host. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is import the Jetson inference module. That's a Python wrapper around the C++ version of the Jetson inference library. And because of that, it is very fast performance and you should see the performance of Jetson inference um, Python be almost identical to the C++ version because it's actually implemented under the covers with C++ and TensorRT and CUDA, things like that. Um, then also import the Jetson utils library that does all the video IO and um, display windows, things like that, whereas the Jetson inference library just does the image recognition, object detection, segmentation, and the deep neural network primitives. Then we're going to import the argparse module and just do some basic command line parsing. Actually, we can just copy that code here from the GitHub page, so it's just boilerplate, just takes in a file name and an optional network, which the default of which is Google Net. And then we're going to load the image. So just do image equals jetson.utils.loadImage and pass in our file name argument here. This load image function from Jetson Utils is a bit different than other image loaders that you might have worked with in Python in that the memory is directly loaded 
uh, the image is directly loaded into GPU memory, so you don't need to do that extra step, and because of that, it's a bit faster. Um, next, we're going to load the network. So net equals jetson.inference.imagenet and pass in this optional network argument. And I, I manually write out the module names here, but if you prefer, you can use a using statement and skip that. I just like to be explicit in this tutorial where those actual objects are located in, in which module. Uh, next, we're going to actually classify the image. This is going to give us back the class index that the network thought the image represented, and then also the confidence value of that between 0 and 1, 1 meaning 100% confident. Um, we use the net Dot classify function, pass in our image. And if you're curious about these different functions that are available, the different objects, you can consult the Python reference documentation that comes with the repo. So here's the ImageNet Python object and all the different parameters that you can load it with, the different functions like classify, what objects and uh, parameters those take. There's also C++ documentation if, if you prefer to, the, to use that. Okay, so we got the class index and the confidence back. And um, in order to actually get the class name itself, we're going to use a mapping function that looks up that big list of objects and um, returns to us the text from just the index. So class name equals net dot get class description, pass in the index. So the index in this case will be between 0 and 999 since these models have a thousand different object classes in them and it just looks that up in the big list of objects and gives you back the textual description. Next we're just going to do a real simple print statement of what the results were. So print We're going to print out the string and the class ID and the confidence. Let's format that class name, class index, and the confidence. Okay, so that's it. Simple example, but you can take this, build on it from here, output the um, value to whatever you're doing, you're working on a project using GPIO or servos or things like that to have this actually go and control something. Uh, but for illustrative purposes, we're just going to output the result to the, the console here. So in order to run this, do python3 myrecognition.py and then let's try this black bear image. Okay, so the result was it thinks it's 98% black bear. Let's try the next one here, which is the brown bear. Run it again. This time specifying the brown bear image instead. Um, this result was 99.9% .9 confident that this is a brown bear. So again, kind of like the cat example, it's kind of interesting that it's able to tell different types of species apart from each other as opposed to just a, a whole high level thing like that's a bear. It actually can tell that's a black bear versus brown bear versus polar bear. So let's try it on this polar bear example too. In this case, it's 100% confident that it's a polar bear. Okay, so now that we've covered how the code actually looks, how it works, how we classify an image, let's test on a real-time camera stream and play around with a bunch of different objects that you might have around your house. I have here my desk. So in order to do that, we're just going to run the ImageNet program again, but this time pass in um, an identifier of your camera. And you can find the type of cameras that are supported here on the camera streaming and multimedia 
page again. And uh, I'm going to be using a video for Linux 2 camera. It's a Logitech C920 that I'm using, but there's lots of different cameras that are supported. You can use a MIPI CSI camera, you can use a, an RTP or RTSP video stream. Generally, the USB webcams are plug and play and real easy to get going. So my camera is mounted to dev slash video zero. That's a video for Linux 2 device. So that's going to be the path that I pass in to the ImageNet program here. So that's going to fire up and this is running on my desk here. I have a couple different objects that we can try around. There's a, an apple that it actually picked out as a particular type of apple, Granny Smith. Some kids toys for my kids. See if it can recognize this, Hammerhead Shark. I guess my hand was in the way there. It's interesting to play around with it and see what confuses it. And we'll, we'll see later when we actually retrain our own model, this type of experiment, experimentation is very useful to learn how um, the network responds, what type of additional training data you might need to, to gather. Also, it's kind of fun just to point it at your desk because it can do TVs and common items that you might just be working with. Let's see if it can do laptops, things like that. Okay, so that concludes the video on image classification inference. In a later video, we're going to retrain our own image classification models and also um, do object detection and other types of deep neural networks. So thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. To learn more, visit nvidia.com DLI or email us at nvdli at nvidia.com.